Peter was a praying fellow. Paul was a praying fellow. I think that that was a key to their success in the Word. But I like these thoughts that Paul brings to us, and you're very familiar with this as well. But I'm just going to quickly read this passage for us. You'll be very familiar with it. And it's the passage where Paul tells us how to go out and, and, and be ready for warfare. And it is, we said, this is this armor thing, right? We might have learned that since we were kids in, in kindergarten, in Sunday school. So here we go. Paul is saying in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, he's reaching toward the end of his writing to them. He could be saying anything he wanted to say to them at this point, but I want you to notice where his mind is at and what he wants them to think about. He said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, okay, and in the power of his might, not our own. If we're trying to do this in ourselves, you're going to have a really tough time and you're going to be very tired and not perhaps nearly so successful as we could be. As I, I say again, we're going to do the things of the world in the world's ways, sometimes with the wisdom of the world, and sometimes that works. But when you're going to do the things of God, we've got to do it God's way, and there is no way you do that according to the world, and it really works. Not on the side of God, it doesn't. Wow. So in the power of his mind, here it is then, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Is that enough for you to make you realize those guys were up against it? Do we really feel like most mornings when I go out that I would be wanting to say that? I, maybe it's true. I suppose it's true for us too. But if so, remember, the way you're going to win such a warfare is not according to the ways of this world. It's going to be according to the ways of God. And that's going to include prayer and the Word of God being effective, changing and affecting our minds to make our minds as God would have them to be. So here we are, verse 13. Wherefore, therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, that's a military kind of thought there, to take your stand. You know, we talk about Custer's last stand. It's a fight, it's a battle. You're going to be able to stand and fight and win. Hmm. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with, ha, truth. That's powerful. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. So, hey, we know this, don't we? Think about it. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith where with you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We know this. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's lovely. We could talk, we could certainly, and some of you have, taught entire lessons, I'm certain about this, that were wonderful. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. I love that. And the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Who wants to run off to war and forget the sword? Because it's been observed that that's really the only offensive weapon that he's mentioning here, right? Everything else is defensive when you think about it. Essentially defensive. So the shield is essentially defensive, protective, defensive. That's all great, got to have that. But hey, the one, the one that's going to go out there and beat the enemy is, is the offensive weapon, the, the sword. And what is the sword then? What's, what is it that's going to cause the day to be won in this battle? The answer is taking the sword, which is the word of God. Amen. Hey, the word is important, isn't it? We're not going to win many battles without it. We'll go out there, and, and if we forget to take our swords, I think the enemy will just crush us one way, form, shape, or another. Because the enemy is actually pretty smart. 
The enemy is good at what they do. The question is, how will we be in what we do in the name of the Lord? So, notice this then in verse 18. And this is the part I wanted us to get to. All right, you've got all this on. You've got the, the, the amazing armor of God. You've got all the armor of God. I'm ready to go fight. Open the door and let me out. I'm ready. Where's the enemy at? Let me go. I'm... But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Notice what Paul's mind is on at this point then. What is he saying? He is saying in verse 18, pray always. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Wow. And watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What is he saying? Don't go running out the door. I don't care what kind of armor you got. I don't care what kind of a sword you got. You don't go anywhere without prayer in the name of the Lord. You don't go anywhere without saturating the effort with prayer. You know why? Because the battle is really the Lord's. And we've got to realize as His people, it doesn't matter how we've outfitted ourselves. Without the dynamic of Him working for Him, for us, for His people, we may go out there and lose big time. So for Paul, it's essential praying always. You know, I've read, I've done this thing about the, 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 the full armor of God. And at times I think maybe even quit before I got to verse 18 and realizing, oh my goodness, I am now at least realizing, wow, I was leaving out this essential. We're going to war. You better be going in prayer. That the wisdom of God and, and the work of it. Now notice what he says in verse 19. Back to this word business and, and the prayer. And you be praying for me that utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. What did, what did Paul say? Paul, you've preached a hundred sermons, a thousand sermons. You've talked to people of high station and low. You've talked to people who are, are very wise according to this world, and you've just talked to ordinary people, ladies and women out at a prayer meeting by the, by the river bank. You've talked to people. What, you've got it, buddy. You don't need any. What are you talking about? You know that you're not going to go out the door without your, your armor on in case you meet the enemy because you want to be ready and prepared. But no, Paul says, no, you be praying always. And you pray for me every day that there will be given to me a speaking, an utterance of God's word that will be effective. Amen. And in verse 20 he said, for which, that mystery of the gospel, the word of God, he says, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak in the ways I ought to speak. Paul, very skillful speaker, very capable uh, man in setting forward the message and the word. Done it dozens of times, hundreds of times, perhaps thousands of times over the course of his career says, oh no, you Ephesians, be praying for me. That wherever I go, whatever I'm doing, that God would be with me and give to me utterance to speak, that I can speak the word as I ought to speak it. Wow. Can you say amen? amen. 